I told you you're gonna feel okay. some fear, right? Okay. Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you you're gonna feel some fear you ain't felt? No, 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 It is a rivalry that goes back years. Two men that have known each other for decades and wanted only one thing, the top. Oh, and a left hand! Sid's not taking it down! Now Haney's got the fire in his eyes! I won! Hit it! Twitter! On one side of the ring stands the Dream Haney, a master technician with lightning-fast reflexes and impeccable defense that dares to become a great. With an undefeated record and a hunger for greatness, he looks forward to forever engraving his name in the boxing books. But standing in his way is Ryan Garcia, a rising star with blinding speed and devastating power that has been doubted and has been mocked by the boxing world, but is non-arguably a force to be reckoned with. As the date of their highly anticipated showdown draws near, the world waits with bated breath to see who will emerge victorious. Will it be Haney's technical brilliance or Garcia's raw power that reigns supreme? From the bustling streets of Oakland, California, emerged a young prodigy with a dream as big as the world itself. Born on November the 17th, 1998, Devin Haney discovered his love for boxing at the tender age of seven. Under his father's guidance, he honed his skills and developed a style uniquely his own, with many similarities to the exciting style of pretty boy Floyd Mayweather. As a young amateur, Haney quickly rose through the ranks, racking up an impressive record of victories and earning numerous national championship belts. His talent was undeniable, his potential limitless, but it wasn't just his physical prowess that set him apart. It was his unwavering work ethic and relentless drive to be the best. While on his path to amateur greatness, he came across a guy that was also a big name at the time and a formidable amateur, Ryan Garcia. The pair had a total of six fights, three of which Devin won, and three fights that Ryan Garcia won, with the only living footage of a fight between them being the following. said it was clear that Ryan possessed a natural gift, a gift that would propel him to the upper echelons of the boxing world. With blinding speed, devastating power, and an innate sense of timing, he quickly established himself as a name to be reckoned with in the amateur ranks, and clearly created a lot of buzz around his name for when he would turn pro. You, what's your record as amateur? Uh, I have 11 losses, but I have 115 fights. That's great. After many knockouts and a featherweight minor title to his name, Garcia was set to defend his strap against Cesar Valenzuela, who was thought to be a hard-fought test for the kid. That Valenzuela can take a shot so I can break him down. Oh, Ryan has a lot of speed. He's very fast. The boxing historian. He loves watching fights. His favorite fight to watch, Sugar Ray Leonard, who came away with the victory. Let's, very charismatic kid. I, I asked him in the ring, in the gym against fighters like Vasil. It's very important for a fighter when they when they train and they get in the ring oh. and spar. That was a great left hook. Get in the ring and spar some champions. Yeah, has a win over Virgil. He's on Instagram, this kid does something. Because yeah. those are deadly. Those are deadly mistakes against a fighter. Like so far, he hasn't needed to appeal to that. He uses speed. He has the tools to complete that mission. He, he looks like a mature professional when he's in fights. He, he's walking them down. He throws the feints once at it. Exactly. You want to you apply. You... And after two dominant rounds, Garcia finally found an opening. Hey, be careful. He's lunging, trying to create off the track. Gilberto Becerra is yelling at him. Telling him, hey, go get him. But um, Ryan Garcia's father gave him the... 
correct instructions. Train them. It's it's a big plus because there's fight they can only fight coming forward, but when you apply pressure and they're moving backwards, they don't know already caught. And when you look at Valenzuela, I expected him to be a lot taller, but he's the same size as me. There, it looked like a slip. Oh. Yeah, it's just that sometimes a lot of fighters, are, they have longer reach and they're taller. They're slower. That's the case with Valenzuela here. Big left hand there from Ryan Garcia. You see Valenzuela's legs. He's wow. just reaching so far is Valenzuela, despite his five and a half after him. Ooh, and he catches, he catches Ryan, but then he gets hand. Beautifully placed there. Valenzuela threw his best punch of the night and he gets caught and he's about to get finished here as the bell sounds and it's a TKO. Did you like the stoppage? Yes, because it was going to get worse. During this time, Garcia was a far bigger name than Haney as Devin was fighting in bars in Tijuana, Mexico while Garcia was knocking people left and right and was building a huge social media following. However, after quite some time, Devin's name became well known among the boxing world after he captured the WBC interim title by beating down the Russian Zaur Abdulayev. From the outset, Devin controlled the pace of the fight like a true veteran and kept firing his hard jab to Zaur's face. The Russian wanted to test the waters in the third, but it had no result. He was simply getting outclassed by the younger fighter. And after the fourth round, Zauer's corner decided to put an end to this fight after they saw the punishment that he was getting. Tables had turned, Devin was the WBC interim champion, and Garcia was a contender that was amassing massive views by knocking people out. But, Devin would not stay an interim champion for long. After Lomachenko got elevated as a super champion, Haney became the official WBC champ and was now the name everybody wanted a shot to. So Ryan Garcia was determined to earn that shot. November the 2nd, 2019. Ryan Garcia versus Romero Duno. Duno was believed to be a good opponent that had chances of making an upset and defeating Ryan, but all those hopes were lost. Ryan Garcia doesn't have that. He was a very good amateur fighter. So he has gotten the pedigree behind him. Multiple junior national titles over 200 amateur wins. Hard right hand that landed and shook Duno. Garcia able to land that right now. He's down, he goes. Right hand and a hook, and Duno is hurt. Duno is hurt bad. Wow, it's over. And after such a knockout, the question if he could repeat such a performance was asked, and he surely delivered this time against an opponent which future rival Tank Davis had knocked out. Davis, that knocked him off balance. Garcia closing in now. Davis and Seven Palmer. Caught him with a left hook. Similar left hook he caught Romero Duno with. It was a glancing left hook. It didn't look like much, but those are the shots that really hurt when they graze you off the temple. After a stunning left hook landed to Fonseca's chin, the fight was over, and Garcia was awarded the WBC silver belt. For his luck, Devin Haney was there, and the pair exchanged some words. Devin Haney, hold up. I need about two. 
If he's the champ, I'm the champ, right? I'm the champ. I'm the champ, and if he wants a real fight, he can fight me. I, hey, I should be champ, right? Let me ask you guys, a little bit of a discrepancy between who won what in the amateurs. Devin says he's won all six of the matchups against you. You say something different. Yeah, it's different. You know, look at it. After that incident, Ryan would take some time off and would actually return to the ring a whole one year later, while Devin was determined to dominate every single fighter they put in front of him with the ultimate goal of fighting Lomachenko and beating him. In front of him was a former champion and hard-fought Yuri Orcas Gamboa, who wouldn't go down easily. In round one, the super-quick Haney and former two-time champion Gamboa studied each other. Haney, with advantages in height and reach, moved to his left and snapped his jab. Some pop in search of the 135 title. In those punches, you go back to the ninth round when he was... We forget, we didn't mention... Don't like to use the quit. I, in that fight, I... Down, he wants to knock him down four times and then finish. Stop, stop, stop. He counters nicely. And Bo was looking for a chance to pounce in, just like he did right. Pretty good round for Devin Haney. Fought mostly in the out. Haney, the longer fighter, rangier, better jag shots when he's hurt, so you've got to be aware too of hurt game. The 21-year-old Haney had easily banked the first three rounds. He was boxing well. Gamboa needed to do something to slow Haney down. Haney's spearing jab kept snapped Gamboa's head back, and we could see that he was frustrated. As a streak of 41 catches through round three, Gamboa 11. And here's a stat for But there are people in boxing that would tell you that Devin Haney is the most big right hand there from Devin Haney. Going downstairs and then these young lightweights. His skill is widely that normally goes down with. There's another one. Lead right. It's the injury or the age. He is 38 years old. It looks like Haney's trying to step back and, and counter. He's used to train it using sandbags as punching bag. Fighter time to rest. And I would also like to see Haney. Haney was more aggressive in round eight. He clipped Gamboa with a right and left. And in round nine, Haney continued his dominance, punishing Gamboa. I mean, Ryan Garcia, only because of his following oh. and because of his explosiveness. He needs. Oh, big straight right hand that you believe pain of the boxing world. What's well, not? He's hit Gambo with several big hooks. Rounds 11 and 12 were more of the same. Haney was completely in control, and Gamboa was hurt and exhausted. First half of the fight, the ten last two rounds. You heard his corner, so you got to win him. He was in this fight to win, not the second half. I'm telling you, the intensity. You've seen a lot of his fights. Do you mention? Not this time. Haney's looking for a Just knockout. Apologize for the language coming out of the corner of Devin Haney. He can double up on one of them. Oh, that right hand staggered. This fight is not over. Haney is still looking for that knockout right now. He, Haney's looking for a home run. I'm telling you, whether it's a. And that will Lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream. A little after that fight, the tables had completely turned in the lightweight division. Teofimo Lopez managed to beat Lomachenko and got every major belt to his name apart from the WBC one which Haney had, but more on that later. Ryan Garcia was now determined to make a comeback, but this comeback was different. He would take on his very first challenge in Luke Campbell for the WBC interim title that would put the winner of this fight as the mandatory challenger for Devon's belt. 78 seconds. The fight started off cool, with both trying to understand each other's pace is the key for Campbell. He loves throwing it to speak. He's is looking to time that sharp. Oh, a straight right hand. But right now, that was a little trip up of the feet, and you're going to see a lot more of that whenever you, whenever you see a southpaw and orthodox. It's instinctive. Look like we saw a Euro step there. Soon, though, his arrogance was to prove his undoing, and as he chased a spectacular knockout, Campbell countered with a fierce left that dropped him. First ball, full of hit Garcia, heating up in the corner. Campbell, you see Campbell up on his toes. Garcia, much more flat foot. Seems like he wants to. Oh, left hand sends the kid down. That's what he was setting him up for. Luke was looking for that overhand left. What must be going through Ryan Garcia's mind? He's never been in trouble. Much overhead left. 
You gotta stay calm there though, with Ryan Garcia. Don't think Just seconds before the bell in the fifth round, Garcia caught Campbell with a brilliant counter left hook, and the Briton stumbled back to his corner, hurt and drained. That's for Luke Campbell, a win for him, and he believes he gets another world title. That's the reason because he has so, so fast hands. His hands are so fast, he doesn't need more shots. Just as I say that, with Garcia's numbers. Big, heavy flurry in a while. A good, good punch right there by Garcia. Straight that power, that speed. Oh, and there's a nice little flurry for Campbell. This is a good round. Oh, good round. Right. Coming to the left hook, right at the bell. And Campbell was ready to get that snappy left hook. He survived one more round. But the ending in the seventh was clinical, with Garcia drawing Campbell's hands high before planting a hook low to the body. The Briton writhed on the canvas in agony and failed to meet the count. And that resilience, Chris, comes from that's one mean pretty boy in Ryan Garcia. See, I see uh, Ryan Garcia winning rounds except for that. Like, also saying to Ryan Garcia, you're young. Oh, and he goes down, and now Campbell is standing two knees. He's down. Garcia was now the WBC interim champion and the mandatory challenger for Devin Haney, and he didn't hide what his intentions were. So where does Devin Haney rank on your hit list of potential opponents? Man, Devin Haney, is he's going to be that, that opponent, of course, I want to fight him. I want to fight Tank first, of course, but you know, it is what it is. If we can make Devin, let's make Devin. Why not? Let's go. Let's go. Hey. I'm ready, I'm ready, man, I'm ready. Who, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Who do you guys want? Who do you guys want? What do you want? Finally, the WBC were set to order Haney to defend his title against Garcia. However, Ryan seemed to show little interest in a potential fight with Haney and voiced his desire to face Gervonta Davis or Manny Pacquiao instead, ultimately fighting neither in the end. This was clearly a duck. However, this wasn't the end of their story. Ryan Garcia was, again, set to face a boxer by the name of Jojo Diaz, who was a hard puncher, but again pulled out of the fight due to mental problems. True or not, the boxing world was quick to criticize him, and for that Devin Haney stepped up and fought him, and we can only say one thing, he completely broke him down. Haney was far more aggressive than usual. He applied pressure, but when Diaz attempted to fight on the inside, Haney took a step back and fired combinations. Seven inch reach advantage for the dream. The way Diaz fought against Javier Fortuna. Javier Fortuna. Notice how Devin. You know, the gloves of Jojo Diaz. Nothing really breaking the guards right up, but go around with hooks, left and right hooks. Jojo Diaz's only loss came against Gary Russell Jr. Oh, jab lands. Slowly but surely, Jojo starting to close the distance a little bit. Finally, in round four, the fight broke out as Diaz was able to assert himself. He made it ugly in the clinch and let loose with chopping punches to the body. This is a good spell here for the challenge. I like what JoJo's doing here. He's aiming straight for the body, getting the good run for Diaz. Oh, big left hand for Diaz. Our fighting Devin Haney, that's exactly what I would do. Las Vegas, and we get the home. Whoa. And the 10th round was starting to hurt in favor of Devin Haney. Thought he might have done, as you see JoJo flurring in the corner. Diaz. Haney. Be content hitting gloves. These are points being piled up by Devin Haney. And in the end, it all came down to a unanimous decision victory for the Dream. In the corner. Is he going to unload? He needs to be mindful of that right uppercut, but still, he needs to throw a caution in the wind. That's what he needs to do. Oh, big uppercut. And then finally, JoJo fires back and he... Point. Over three minutes, Devin Haney was in control, landing most of the most of the round, and then JoJo landing... You mentioned how many body shots. This is where they want him to unload. He's got Haney back in the corner, and that's what he's doing. He's still aiming Look around on social media. Chris, a lot of... He, he's never been on this fight. He's never been on this stage with champions like this. Just, just go... He's fighting. He's fighting for fire with fire with JoJo Diaz. Oh, Haney might... By this point in time, Devin Haney was clearly levels above Ryan Garcia, and he was looking for an undisputed fight with Cambosos, who had managed to defeat Lopez. Garcia was no longer an option, 
Not only because of that, but also because he was more focused on a big money fight against Gervonta Tank Davis who held no belt. In February of 2022, it was announced that Garcia would be returning to the ring after a long spell of inactivity against former IBO lightweight champion Emmanuel Tagoy. He easily dominated Tago and grabbed a victory to put him again at the top 10 of contenders. But as we said earlier, he was looking for that one fight with Tank. After having another easy matchup against Fortuna, he made it clear that his next fight would be against Gervonta Davis in April of 2023. But I will fight Tank next. If Tank wants that uh, at 140, hey, but hey, hey, I'm gonna record all the negotiations on the other side of the story, Devon had become undisputed and was aying the Hall of Famer Lomachenko. But that all changed in late 2023. After losing to Gervonta, Ryan made a comeback fight and knocked Oscar Duarte out, and Devine moved up in weight and completely dominated the WBC champion Regis Progres for his belt. It was finally time for this long rivalry to come to an end, and on the 10th of February, the official announcement was made that Haney would defend against Garcia. It wouldn't take long for them to meet face to face, however. You're not like that, bro. You're, you're fear, not like that. that. You're not like that. The fear is getting you. Like getting you. The fear is 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 getting you. I told you you're gonna feel some fear, right? Then I tell you that. Then I tell you you're gonna feel some fear. You ain't felt. No, 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 no. Why that? Why that? Why that? Whether you like it or not, this is one of the biggest fights in boxing. And while many argue that Devin will completely outbox him, don't forget that Ryan holds that equalizer and could change the pace of the fight anytime he wants. A boxer against a puncher. Who will come out on top? Come April the 20th and we shall find out.